Hello and welcome to FemFlux Friday. I'm here with my hosts who also happen to be very good friends of mine, Camille Perriott, Whitney Jones, and Linda Murray. And it just so happens that today we're going to be discussing a topic that is close to many of our hearts, making friends as an adult. It's no secret that forming and maintaining meaningful relationships becomes more challenging as we grow older. With busy work schedules, family responsibilities, and social anxieties, it can be very difficult to find the time and confidence to meet new people and build genuine connections. While it would be easy for us to sit here and simply list out all the places you can go to try to find and meet new friends, like joining a yoga class, a knitting club, or <laughs> hitting up the bar, we're gonna go a lot deeper than that, okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna get uncomfortable here and talk about the deeper challenges we all face when it comes to making friendships later in life. We wanna challenge ourselves, as well as all of you, to get out there equipped mm. with the tools to create lasting friendships. But before we get started on all this, be sure to subscribe to Olympia TV so that you never miss any of our episodes. Comment below and share this with all of your closest friends or people that you want to be your closest friends. <laughs> 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 no. Okay, ladies, this is gonna get very uncomfortable. Because oh, great. Uh -oh. We, we, of course, you know, <laughs> we can so list out everywhere <laughs> that we can send people to go and meet new people. We can send them to Bumble. We can send them to Tinder. We can send them. But what do people actually, you know, what are the challenges that people actually face when it comes to meeting friends, right? And so I want to talk about, like, some of the, you know, roadblocks that people face. So we're going to kind of, like, start off by <clears throat> identifying some of the challenges. We're going to face them head on. And then we're going to try to wrap it up with some solutions. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my favorite social behavior experts is Vanessa Van Edwards. She is brilliant. She is charismatic, and she she has a lot of content that really makes you think about what your presence, um, you know, how it impacts the world. So let's start off with this video of Vanessa Van Edwards, and then we're going to discuss. I didn't realize that our influence comes from just being present. In other words, I didn't realize how contagious we are our charisma, our bad moods, our good, good moods. And pretty early on, I realized there was this effect that if you walked into a room and there was one person in a bad mood, it infected everyone. I remember I was in a study group. I walked into the room. I was in a really nice mood, right? It was like a lovely day. And there was one person in the room who was just down. They were just having a bad day. And I remember the entire room got brought down. Even I was like, gosh, yeah, I am stressed. I am burnt out, as he started talking about how burnt out he was. And I had this aha moment of if one person in a bad mood can infect a room, could one person in a really good mood infect a room? Yes. Mm. So, and this is what this is what I want to start off with, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when we think about making friends, our our first thought is, you know, I want to go somewhere where I can, you know, find people. But one of the one of the apprehensions people have, one of the things that people really feel held back by is they feel like they're going to walk into a room and like nobody's going to like them. Mm -hmm. You know, we all face that fear, right? Mm -hmm. So the perspective I like to look at it is like, what are you bringing into the room? Like, what are what are your guys' thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, for me, I'm like now living in the law of attraction and really understanding yeah. the importance of being happy, like right. how super important that is. So, um, yeah, no question. I mean, I and it's like what she's saying. If you're happy, can a happy person walk in yeah. to a space with negativity and really be infectious, yeah. you know, and I feel that um, I really know the importance of yeah. that. And, yeah. it, and it's so weird how just that simple thing, yeah. like yeah. being happy, it yeah. starts yeah. with me right. always. And I do look when I'm like in a situation where something like all of a sudden's in my space, yeah. then I kind of, I look back at self and yeah. say, how did I create this? Where where am I vibrating from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, am I in an alignment <clears throat> with that negativity? Right. So right, right. I agree with it. I found myself um, struggling, especially after I retired from competing. Mm -hmm. That I was I, when I after I was done competing, I looked around I'm like I don't 
have that many friends, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was, you know, it was like family or, you know, athletes that I would be yeah. coaching mm. and, and uh, co workers, mm. but I didn't have a lot of like actual, like, close friends. And one thing I like told, it was kind of like a re- New Year's resolution I gave to myself last year, mm. and it was to put yourself out there. Remember that movie with Jim Carrey, mm-hmm. The Yes Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I'm just gonna say yes. I'm yeah. not, because yeah. it's, 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 it's almost like a mental roadblock that you yeah. have yeah. To, that prevents you from that. It's really mm-hmm. nice, I'm, I'm, get, I'm tired at the end of the day. I wanna go home and yeah. just chill with the family. But you have to kind of like put yourself out there and just say yes to yeah. things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's hard, too, because you look at friendships when you're younger and as an adult. So as an adult, most of us have to work for a living. Yeah. Some have kids. So our time is limited. Well, the way that you develop a friendship is it's time. Like, not necessarily always quality, it's quantity. Right. Mm -hmm. So you just get used to, you know, you're in class all, you know, an entire year with these kids these other kids you could be new but you be eventually become friends because you're with them all day in class yeah. you're at recess or you're in sports and so mm-hmm. you have these times that you're mm-hmm. meeting consistently and yeah. that's how mm-hmm. friendships are formed right mm-hmm. well as adults unless you have a ton of free time which most of us yeah. don't you're limited to your proximity right. with your work mm-hmm. friends or maybe for mm-hmm. us you like yeah. our gym friends yeah that doesn't mean it's the best quality of person and we are required to have that consistent right. time with them to build something deeper than, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. especially with work, because you got to still keep that yeah. professional yeah. boundary. Yeah. yeah. This, so yeah. we are limited. This might be hard for us because, like, let's give somebody all the time, right? Let's give them all the locations. Let's 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 take let's take somebody who feels like they have a hard time making friends. Maybe they genuinely like struggle to like f- form connections with people. Let's give them all the time in the world. Let's give them all the places they could possibly meet. And they still find that they're they're struggling to to feel like they're making connections with people and mm. having people like them, right? Mm. They feel they feel almost like like a victim. Like nobody likes me. Nobody I can't make friends mm. with anybody and they have they're spending all the time trying to get to know people and they're so what challenges do you think that people potentially face when that happens i think yeah. a lot of its personality traits yeah. like that yeah. there's somebody who is like because we have to be real with ourselves you know yeah what I mean? there can be like what do they call it? like like stage five clinger or whatever yeah. Yeah. like there could be someone who is just <laughs> there could be someone who is just like overly eager which yeah. can be a turn off it has to like the yeah. energy flow has to yeah to to work out it, yeah. it takes time mm-hmm. yeah. yeah it takes time to slowly etch away some of these little boundaries so you can share certain yeah. things mm-hmm. but um and then also there's like some energy that's yeah. just maybe they're they're like kind of a toxic person yeah. they want friends they want to build a friendship but yeah. maybe if you go out with them that it's like you're like whoa you just yeah. turned crazy yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. or so, you don't know them well yeah and so you yeah. go like let's go hang out and then you're yeah. like okay i did <laughs> and not maybe know they lost, like yeah. self-awareness you know <laughs> yes i think that people people are on two ends of the spectrum. I feel like people either lack self-awareness or they're overly mm-hmm, self-aware. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes find myself struggling on that far end of the spectrum where I'm so self-aware that when I meet somebody that I really like, I worry that they're going to like get to know me and then they're going to mm-hmm. they're going to like you know, I'm overly self-aware of like everything mm-hmm. that I feel like somebody might not like about me, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And so I think people struggle and the the main thing for people to do is to become self-aware just enough enough, you know, Mm -hmm. because either people are lacking that self-awareness, like what energy they're bringing into the room, or they are so overly self-aware that it turns people off on Mm -hmm. the opposite end of the spectrum, Mm -hmm. you know? I love this video by uh, Vanessa Van Edwards on the um, email audit. So Mm -hmm. let's let's watch this. I want to get your guys' thoughts. Make it even more practical. Here's a really practical way to think about it. I want you to do an email audit. I want you to open up your sent email folder and I want you to open five important emails that you've sent out in the last few days to whoever, your colleagues, teams, customers. And I want you to look at the first 10 words that you used. What we don't realize is that we are throwing away our words with words that don't mean anything. Or we're jumping right into agenda, which is okay when we're rushed, but you're actually taking away cues that people need to be successful. And here's the kicker. In your email audits and those important 
emails. I want you to count how many warm words you're using and how many competent words you're using. We found in our lab, we can predict exactly where people fall on the charisma scale based on the email audit I just asked you to do. I want to do it. So, yeah. so check this out. Here's something that I've noticed. And I don't know if you guys have, have noticed this too. I will meet somebody in person and they are lovely to be around. And then when I have like written communication with them, it, it comes across like the way that they, they communicate with written communication is so like cold and off-putting. And I think that there's a lot of people that maybe don't realize how they have, it, it's yeah. totally not even, they're not aware of it, but the way that they have their like written communication. And right now we're in an era where we are all online. Yeah. We do mm -hmm. a lot of written communication. Mm -hmm. And I think there are people who struggle with like their <coughs> written communication skills. They may come across, across as cold and not realize why they're turning people off. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I actually mm -hmm. just had this conversation two nights ago with my oldest son. So yeah. he's a junior. He's talking to a lot of these football recruiters for college. Mm. And so he's having to reply. Right. And you know, he's like, gosh, mom, I need help with like, how do I write professionally and so I'll have him draft it and then I go back and look I mean that's the way you teach right but everything was always just getting straight to the point yeah. answering yeah. the questions I'm like you've got to show personality so right. I have not mm -hmm. seen that yeah but I'm like oh thank goodness that backs up yes. I, I actually know what I'm talking about but it's true I'm like yes. you need to you know express yeah. he's very energetic um surprise right but yeah. it's he I'm like you've got to show that you're fun you have a good personality that you're intelligent mm -hmm. don't just become robotic and answer yeah. the question but now I want to go back and look at even in yes. the last week <laughs> I'm usually I try to show number one care like oh yeah. you know how are you what's going on but not make yeah. it too generic <laughs> yeah but you're right like your written communication it's amazing is how far that goes you know and how people want to respond mm -hmm. to you yeah. if they're if you're off-putting or yeah. gosh, yeah. they're so serious mm -hmm. or boring mm -hmm. or this is these are the things that that are the reasons why people are struggling to make connections with people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it's crazy how far it will go. You guys know, you guys have communicated with Heather Algundi. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she, the way that she writes, even if it's just one sentence, yeah. it always leaves me feeling like so happy. Yes. I was so, yeah. so and she yeah. was in charge of responding to the Olympians. Mm -hmm. And like every okay. time she left like a little smiley face or said some warm word in yeah. there that it went so it went such a long way. And I felt so connected to her. I felt so mm -hmm. warm towards her. Mm -hmm. And just the so way true. that she so was true. communicating. And then when I saw her in person, I, I felt this warmth towards her. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how those Well, you feel like you already kind of knew her because yes. she would talk to you just like she Very it was almost friendly. like you were texting yes yeah. Yeah. and the same thing has happened in the past with people where i'm communicating with them and they're so cold and so you know it come across so harsh mm -hmm. the way that they come at with the with the emails or the messages on instagram then i meet them and i'm like you're actually a really nice person yeah i'm so confused like it's so disconnected you know mm -hmm. what i mean this could what be what i love struggle. about emails for me is the fact that i do get to be get straight to the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like a cheerleader at heart and I can use a whole lot of extra words and get mess around before I actually get to the point. Mm -hmm. So I love that's what I recognize with emails yeah. Yeah. is my opportunity. I try to like within that first sentence, you know, be cordial. Hello, yeah. how are you? I'm glad to hear it. And get right to the point because I, at the same time, I don't yeah. want to use a whole lot of right. ways to have that conversation and in flaw. that situation. Not too much. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I kind of feel like they're all friends. There are people that I work yeah. with, but yeah, it's... Or yeah, it doesn't like even have to be more point. words, but just like the words that you do use. Totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just has to have some sort of connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how you can open up the line of communication. I'm, you know? I'm thinking about that meme that you had <laughs> posted about the kissy faces. Oh, gosh, I don't remember... <laughs> Kissy face. How like whenever you add a kissy face or hearts at the oh, end yeah. of a sentence, <laughs> it makes, oh, yeah. you said when you add that, yeah, like you know, girls do it. We add mm -hmm. a little kissy face yeah, or yeah. a little smile or a little heart, and it's yes. kind of just like a like, well, okay, done. Yeah. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna Conversation hug. over. We're all real friends, so we're gonna we're gonna like get get to our like kissy face talk. Um, and uh, while we're doing that, we're gonna take a quick break and then don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back and we'll share some of that with you.
Welcome back to FemFlex Friday. Um, we are discussing making friends as an adult. It's a really <clears throat> tough topic because we feel like we're truly speaking to you and we want to bring you into our world. You are our friends and we're your friends. And um, so, so I hope you feel that warmth from us because we certainly have it towards you. Um, I, I want to talk about something that's a little bit harsh mm -hmm. to talk about, okay? Let's, let's go back to what we bring to the table, right? So what we bring to the table, we have to be really, we have to be realistic in any relationship that we, that we have. And as adults, I don't feel that, you know, a relationship, romantic or other, or platonic is necessarily a transaction. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like some people struggle to form close relationships when they're trying to um, have a close relationship with somebody that they want something from, like it's like yeah. a one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this person has a lot to offer them. That's a climber. Mm -hmm. Yes, like, and, and they don't necessarily have something to bring to the table. Totally. And I don't mean to be harsh about that, but I feel like you know, when I want to, when I really want to be close friends with somebody that I know is, 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 is a punch up for me, <laughs> you know, somebody I know is going to bring a lot of value to my life. Like Lenda, mm -hmm. like Whitney, yeah. like yeah. Camille, yeah. you ladies, I aspire to be like all mm -hmm. of you, you know, I feel like, what do I bring to what value am I going to bring into your life? Mm -hmm. I am, I genuinely think about that. Like, mm -hmm. I want to feel like I'm bringing something. I can't just expect, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what, what, Ex mm -hmm. What experience has you, have you guys had when it comes to mm. forming relationships with people and you know being aware of your own value and what you bring mm -hmm. to the table? Yeah, I mean, for me, I know that things change like yeah. through the decades as yeah. I age. Because you always hear, I think you even had a quote up talking about like you have less friends. Like as yeah. you age, yeah. you can count your friends like on one hand. Yeah. Versus some of the friends that I had like 15 or 20 years ago, like now... I see them coming. Like, yeah. I yeah. see that type of personality. You like, learn from it. Yeah, yeah you, you, that you, energy. You it's called wisdom. It's yes. Like, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so for was. me, like, it's, it's that wisdom, it's that energy. And yeah. when, I, when I talk to a person, it's like with Wendy and I, when we, like, first connected, it's just, I can, it's, it's automatic. I can sense. I feel it. Mm -hmm. Like, if I talk to you three times and every time I talk to you, you're sad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're you know, like and it's vibration. like at this point mm -hmm. in my life, it's like you need to. I want to align myself with positive energy, positive people, yeah. people that people in your you safe bring? wavelength. Yeah. That's it. People. Yeah. What can you? You know, what can you bring to me? What can? Mm -hmm. And I want to bring that for to sure. You. Yeah. Just, you don't want an energy sucker. Right, well, you have to right. be careful that you're not in that aspect where, like, yeah. You want a new friendship because you need a friend. You need someone to vent to. You oh, right. You need someone to leech onto because if that's the case, most likely you've burned out your other friends, and that's yes. why you need someone new. Yeah. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. the, a friend of mine is currently dealing with that, and mm. it's like she only gets a text from this friend when she's going when through stuff. Yeah. Mm. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, did I tell you I got to talk to you about yesterday? Yep. And then she never re waits for a reply yeah. from my friend to say, like, she asked, how are you? Just because yeah. that's kind of what you're supposed uh -huh. to do. Right. No. And right. but right. never right. hears from her yeah. otherwise. And she's like, I just don't even, this is yeah. a one-sided friendship. Yeah. So, of that's course, annoying. my friend's pulled away being like, I know what she wants from me. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. sad. So you've got to, people need to be able to check themselves and go, yeah. huh. Am I being a am, friend? Am I one-sided? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's when you want to look at relationships if, if it's sucking a lot right. out yeah. of you, yes. and, and it's you're 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 not getting that fulfillment back. Yeah. And it's okay if you yeah. talk about what's bothering you, but then I want to talk about what's bothering yeah. you too. Totally. Yeah, I need to go both ways. Yeah, and yeah. so it's, it's that's right. It's it's. Someone who is trying to be friends with you, like what you were saying earlier, yeah. Wendy, about you. You had mentioned that, you know, you maybe were. That they're that they're all three of us maybe we're on a different level. You yes. mentioned that, which I completely think is incorrect. I'm totally. But I think <laughs> when <laughs> it doesn't matter, like to me, mm -hmm. I, it doesn't even matter who yeah. you are yeah. Yeah. or like like at all, because yeah. as long as that that 
that actual connections there. If we yeah. can just if we can just sit and chill and laugh. Yeah. And or the best the best yeah. the best example for me is like if you can just kind of chill with someone yeah. and not actually have, have to, to talk. talk. Yeah. And, that, and you can be comfortable. Someone's you the can table, be comfortable right? just yeah. being around that person. Yeah. That's yeah. a really good friend. Yeah. yeah. You know. Totally. And and like to your point, I mean, the value doesn't necessarily have to be a status thing. You know. I mean, totally. Somebody's value is that they are somebody that you can really depend on and rely mm-hmm. on. You know, they're going to mm-hmm. always be there and and you know ready to go with you wherever or whatever. You know, and you and you don't have to think about it. You know, yeah. that's val- that's extremely valuable. Yeah. Well, and identifying those people who are your friend during your rough parts. Yes. It's yeah. easy to have a lot of people come out of the woodwork and be your friend when yeah. things are going great in your life. But yeah. when you're struggling and you know you do need kind of that friend to be there, but they're not. Well, yeah. that's you yeah. gotta look at people's true colors. Yeah. So if you've got good, solid friends when you're in a bad place and vice versa, then yeah. you know there's a connection. There's something real. There's something deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, again, it's it's just like bandwagon sports, Steve. Mm-hmm. Like, you got yeah. these fans. It's easy to go to the top. Everyone mm-hmm. wants to be part of it when things are mm-hmm. great. But who's your ride and die when you're going through the rough times? Mm-hmm. And right. are yeah. you there for your friends yeah. when they're going through it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like, you know, when it comes to, we, we always have, like, I, I see people like share like they have all these requirements what they want from a relationship or what they want from a friend and then like I said they don't necessarily you know think about what they're bringing to the table but another thing that I, I, I find is that you know and this is maybe out of our age range but it is in our age range too I see it mostly in the younger group of people mm-hmm. where they talk about you know how girls are so like jealous and they backstab them and it's like there's all this drama talk you know and I feel like if you're rec- you always recognize in others what you see in yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. And if you're if you're feeling like every time you form a friendship, they backstab mm-hmm. and they you know are totally. jealous of you. Yeah. It, you're it, probably, it, it, probably doing that. You're the common yeah. denominator. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You you don't Called out. You have to realize. And so um, this video I found on TikTok. This is the video um, right here, and I and I feel like when I'm watching this, I I don't I hate to feel like I'm being judgmental, but when I saw this, it made me think. Well, if you're feeling that way about every time you form a friendship, what does that say about you mm-hmm. being the common denominator? Yeah. So yeah. Take a look at this. It's hard making friends because they always it's a hard knock secretly knock hate. It's a hard knock They're secretly knock jealous. Knock It was a short video, but you see, so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, I think, I mean, she looks like she's also in her 20s. I know when I was in my 20s, I had a Mm -hmm. a large group of friends. Yes. And and maybe only (laughs) two of them, maybe only two of them were actual genuine friends that I can like really just hang out and like we can like actually be real with. So something like that, like they 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 might be friends, but they're but they might be like you know they're probably more acquaintances. Acquaintances yeah. Yeah. that are yes, maybe they're seeing that they dated the same guy or or stuff like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that reminds me of my twenties a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know we yeah. have a lot of people in their twenties that are that are watching this, but you know I, I do see this on like all age ranges, like. Anytime somebody says, I'm not, I'm not about drama, usually they are. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah. If you say if, Although I really do not like I drama. I I'm allergic <laughs> to it. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. I, allergic. I know, but... I like shut know, down. If, if it comes up, like, we would say that, but, I mean... I, I, there are mm. people that consistently say that I'm not about drama. It's like one of their defining, yeah. you know, maybe it's even their bio, you know. It's like, their asterisk I don't like, before. I don't like drama. Comment. Like, drama is not in my world. I'm like, why but, do you say that? Like, you're, you're full of it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not, I'm not being judgmental. I'm, I, I feel like we should all be real with ourselves. I mean, I am very real with my shortcomings. I feel like mm-hmm. I definitely struggle. I want to be close friends, but one thing that I struggle with is, you know, I always, I always stress out and I always like worry that like once I get really and I mean one of the one of the things that, that I've experienced is you know when I I feel like people really want to be close to me and then when I bring them in close to my world I have had people who have you know you know kind of like turned on me as like clients and stuff like that mm-hmm. that I get so I, I feel like we're really friends and then I feel like so my yeah. defense mechanism is to like form a wall and that's mm-hmm. something that I have to overcome you know what I mean I think that's normal and I think that's actually a healthy thing it's not like you're building boundaries for everybody, yeah. Yeah. but that's part of growing up, yeah. and that's part mm-hmm. of 
learning personality types that don't mesh with you yeah. mm -hmm. and maybe that you've had a really bad experience with. Um, and that's just a, that's a defense mechanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a healthy thing mm -hmm. yeah. that you mm -hmm. learn over time. I think so. You, you still have to be authentic, I, but yes, you still yeah. have to kind of just keep it at yeah. arm's length for mm -hmm. until you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always comes back to you. Like, us. Like, yeah. And as we age, you really do yeah. understand and get that. Yeah. You know, and you're really at peace with yourself. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know who you are and your intentions, yeah. and you're not trying to put on airs. You're not trying to. Thanks, girl. You know, you, just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're at peace, and so you know, if someone comes into your life and you you recognize that that person's not yeah. for you, or you know, you recognize like, okay, how, what role did I play in this? Mm -hmm. Always. I, I'm always like maybe overly that way. I'm always, mm -hmm. I always like, you know, thinking like what I could have possibly done, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not, it's, I think, yeah, you know, when we get you. older, we do form these healthy defense mechanisms and stuff like that. I also find, and, and this isn't, this isn't like a shallow thing or anything like that, but as I've gotten older, I, I have found that I want more like meaningful relationships where I, mm -hmm. I am bringing value to the yeah. table and I am hanging out with people that I feel like are gonna help me elevate myself. And this isn't like clout chasing, this is, I, mm -hmm. I wanna elevate my soul and I wanna mm -hmm. elevate my energy. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I, Matt and I have had a lot of conversations about this because we have you know found a lot of our friends in, uh, you know, the as we've gotten older in that kind of mind frame. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna share with you mm -hmm. Matt sharing a story that I thought kind of touched and on. And Matt is your well. husband. So oh, for people don't Thank you. Matt, I'm no. sorry. I just assumed you guys know. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is Matt Allen. This is my husband. Uh, and I'm I'm I want to share what he has to say. When I moved from San Diego to San Jose, I had to make a whole new network of friends. And I was really fortunate in that I was able to really make some strong connections with some guys who were they were actually way higher up the food chain than I was, you know, at least financially and professionally. These guys were the masters of the universe, Silicon Valley, heavy hitters. They had everything, everything you could imagine in terms of the trappings of success, all the material possessions, all the prestige of their, their positions in their, in their businesses. But the one thing they didn't have the one place where they hadn't been successful in life was that they didn't have the physique that they wanted. And that was my in. That was what I had to offer. As a trainer and a coach, I was able to offer my knowledge and able to get them in shape and get them that one thing that had been eluding them their whole life. And this is how you connect with people, whether, you know, whether you're, you're reaching up or reaching out, whatever, you gotta have something to offer. You can't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, you wanna be my best friend? You, you gotta have something to offer. <laughs> it's yeah. true. Uh -huh. Good job, Matt. Yeah. Yes. What are yeah. your thoughts? Mm -hmm. I think it's that's right great. On. I mean, they found, they like, clearly Matt also probably had a connection with them because he's into finances too. Yes. Yeah. So yes. he is something they can like, they can converse, but uh, but Matt probably felt really good that he can offer yes. them something and that he can mm -hmm. feel like he was at their level if he yes. didn't feel like he was prior. Yeah. Well, and you need to have kind of an in, and mm -hmm. then you find more common ground. Right. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, like they probably never knew Matt was. I'm a trainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a trainer. No, I've got all these other aspects to my life. Yeah. And then that's what creates meaningful relationships. Right. But you do need to have something There's that something. creates that introduction. Yeah. Because just flying blind, you're gonna look crazy walking mm -hmm. up to someone and be like, "Oh my gosh, we need to go have lunch." And you're like, "We uh, look like we have so much. Yeah. We like yeah. have so much." I feel comment. like you would be my best friend. I'd be like, well, "I don't yeah. know about that." <laughs> yeah, I feel and like that kind of stuff. Be arrested. That's scary now. <laughs> yeah, I think back. Yeah. When did we? When was that okay? To yeah, do? like right. I don't know, high school or I don't even know if it was common to, in high school for somebody to just yeah. come up. I want to be your hey, friend. Yeah. I want to be you in know, this group. I think it's more awkward because you feel like. They need something, or yeah. they have something to gain, because yeah. again, they didn't come to the table with. Right. Why are we best friends? Or going to be best? Like, well, it takes time. You know, yeah. like that saying, like people who are like trying, like who are trying to in the dating world. If yeah. they're like, mm -hmm. I can never find the right person. I'm, right. I'm trying so hard. I'm, I, I keep 
you know, everyone I'm dating is just not the right person and yeah. they're constantly looking and constantly yeah. trying. So, and the first thing I tell them is like, stop flipping trying. Yeah. Just be, do, your, too do hard. Yeah. your own thing and yes. it will hit you. Yeah. And yeah. the same thing with friendships. If you're trying mm -hmm. so hard to make it happen, it's like, just chill out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All amazing advice, ladies. I, I love it. So mm -hmm. we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to wrap this up. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Welcome back to FemFlex Friday. Uh, we've been sharing our thoughts and going deep here with uh, yeah. making friends with all of you and you making friends with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's dive into something that we've all experienced, okay? And I think all of you have also experienced this. But, you know, when it comes to making friends as an adult, another thing that people, another roadblock is because people aren't able to go out and do things like when we were kids, you know, the people that you hang out with the longest and the most are mm -hmm. pretty much what you have access to, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're all going to the club and everything like that. I mean, you're, you're at work, you know, usually people work a nine to five. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, you know, because people are kind of almost like thrust into these relationships. And I think a lot of you mm -hmm. share your experiences because we'd love to hear it. But tell me some of your experiences mm -hmm. with, um, it doesn't have to be your current job, but in the yeah. past or any job that you've had, um, you know, some maybe pros and cons of having some close relationships yeah. with your. I think as you mature, you know, to be careful, as it was the saying, don't poop where you eat. So, <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> like, yep. Don't so if you, if you work sleep. is right, Don't shit where right, you if work, that's what I said, poop. <laughs> work is like, PG. you have to work, right? Yeah. And um, when you train and if that's your workplace of work or your place of peace where you, you know, get what you need, right. you have to just really go with, yeah. I think with yeah. caution. Yeah. And yeah. I think with relationships, it's, it's about patience. Um, yeah. You don't just like quickly jump in <clears> and, you know, because you see someone and you connect with yeah. them, you know, so you have to be cautious, uh, but that's harder. That's easier said yeah. when you're my age versus when you're in your 20s, yeah. 30s, yeah. you don't really understand. Like, it's not a guarantee that this person's going to be yeah. uh, a permanent fixture in your life. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, it's challenging. <laughs> It's tough. So, like with my, we were talking about work and yeah. relationships with coworkers. Uh, I, my job, the gym that I own. So, when we hire people, you hire people who it, we're a very close knit group. Right, we're yeah. around each other all the time. When I'm interviewing someone, it's like, is this someone that I could yeah. hang with, be yeah. friends with? Mm -hmm. So, in reality, as part of the interview, it's like, are we vibing? Or, to, could yeah. we be mm -hmm. friends? Yeah. Well. I work with some of my best friends right. and I feel very lucky, but yeah. then it is hard because considering I'm their boss, I yeah. mean, their person mm -hmm. rates their paycheck essentially, it's hard because you have to still kind of have boundaries, yeah. mm -hmm. but yet mm -hmm. again, there's just a good level of respect I think yeah. on all of our ends where it's like mm -hmm. when we're friends and we're out kind of having yeah. a girl's day or whatever, there's no work mode, there's no like mm -hmm. yeah. level, yeah. Mm -hmm. but then it's great because there is that level of respect because how yeah. can you not be friends sometimes? Yeah. Like yeah. now if you're in a yeah. corporate world, like we don't have HR or we yeah. probably wouldn't be in business. <laughs> but, um, I mean, oh. our environment is different, yeah. but it's, I work with the amazing people. Right. We hang out, we have parties, Super Bowl parties. It's like yeah. whatever it is, we're always Super enjoying each other. You yeah. fly back later and I'm kidding. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's, it's an easy way to kind of yeah. match your coworkers. But then yeah. again, sometimes you see these people who are tight and then they get a new job. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, so do you talk to Linda yeah. anymore? You're like, no, not since I left. And you're yeah. like, wow, I thought you guys were, were friends. More tight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a, th this, this is an interesting top topic yeah. about friendships in the workplace and that you've had a great success with yours because we see your relationship with Alex and you, yeah. guys, mm -hmm. you guys all have really great relationships. 
but um, that can be really, really challenging. Because like yeah, Whitney, yeah. I own a gym and we have a lot of employees. Yeah. And I have found myself getting close to, in the past, one of our managers who mm -hmm. was a female and because we're a lot of a lot of men work yeah. in, our, in our gym. And we got kind of close, but it was really hard when she, she started to show some like, like I invited her over to a Christmas party for, with our family, yeah. and uh, she got so drunk. Like oh. nobody else oh, was no. even like near near that level. <laughs> no way. And we were, and we we had to like like it it was bad. Right. And then it, uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. then yeah, it just, yeah, yeah. it kind of just started like so. Then that was kind of our first red flag. Like okay, you're <laughs> have a little bit of a crazy side. You're great at your yes. job. Yes. yes. You're great let's at your job, but let's keep right. the friendship and the, the yes. work life yeah. separate. And <laughs> But the challenging part can be if if you have to um, not you know some kind of disciplinary action. Yeah, yeah. Cr like it, mm -hmm. that is really challenging. Yeah, that, that is, is so because then you're then you're just like, Ugh, how do I yeah. how do I protest? How do mm -hmm. I not yeah. hurt their feelings, offend yeah. them, and still you know because at the end of the day it's, it's still a job. So yeah. it's challenging. I've learned that the best thing to do is to keep a complete separate relationship yeah. mm -hmm. from our staff, mm -hmm. from our work, so we can be so it just. That's just the way we operate, but mm -hmm. it, it's tricky. It can be. It's different for everybody. Yeah. It, it is different for everybody. Here's a challenge that I faced, and I want to know from you, ladies, um, specifically if you guys find this. So the last like real job that I had, I was I was a manager. I mean, I manage all the facilities, fitness facilities at Stanford. I know you guys. I've told you guys that before. And I loved my job. You know, I mean, we had four. We had four fitness facilities. I had a lot of instructors. I had a lot of coaches and trainers and front desk workers. And I mean, the you know janitor and you know uh, fix it everything. I mean, you name it, right? Yeah. And I connected with everybody. Um, it was hard for me because when I quit that job, I was in my early 30s. And um, and I remember wanting so bad for everyone to see me as like a friend, even though I was I was like good at what I did. Like I definitely you know was very professional and everything. But I think something that kind of brought me down and made me bummed out, and something I really enjoyed once I left was that all of a sudden like I felt like I was able to be like more youthful and mm -hmm. friends with people. And I had to be so serious and so mm -hmm. even though I connected with everybody, it was like it was kind of a bummer because. Because everybody looked at me like I was like their supervisor and yeah. their boss, and I lo and I loved my job. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, but I want to have friends too. Yeah, like I it, the, yeah. they say it's like lonely at the top, you well, know. I and I it, felt mm -hmm. sad about yeah, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you when you're a manager, supervisor, yeah. owner, it, it can be really challenging. I for me personally, I really have a hard time like. Um, confronting somebody about yeah. something that we have to, like if there's an issue that we need to correct I yeah. have a really hard time with that I mm -hmm. completely admit that um, and especially if I have a close relationship that person's even harder like I like dread it yeah like I, I, I get obsessed mm -hmm. but the thought I'm just, I'm like fearful of it so yeah. I've just found it's best for me to have like a you know we're super friendly yeah. very friendly yeah. we invite them over for a, a dinner once in a while or we do you know something else outside of work but for me personally it it, it is this it's hard it, it's hard mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. interesting because i have no problem like that's probably why because like you and we have the same type of business i was yeah. watching you so l last um when we were at, training at your gym you had a bunch of meetings it was like when oh, we had yeah. a big event because yeah. no one can out crazy whitney yes no one, that is true <laughs> but, but i was i was admiring you because you were, you know, you're like, I've got a bunch of meetings and I saw you with your, some of your staff or your trainers and in front of the computer, just like, just being very, very straight, yeah. very mm -hmm. like, like getting business done. I was just like, yeah. wow, that's badass. Oh, mm -hmm. well, thank you. I guess one thing that's different yeah. about you two versus me is like, I worked for, you know, I worked for Stanford University. Yeah. So like, I didn't have as much, you know, carte blanche as you guys have. I mean, totally. working for yourselves, it's, it's totally different. You guys can we have your own style. Yeah. You are making the rules for yourself. You're not mm -hmm. like working for mm -hmm. somebody. So that is, I guess that makes it unique for you guys. Yeah. Right? Well, being self-employed is definitely a lot of work. Uh, like it is it's yeah. hard because it's, you have to check yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a schedule. And yeah. I think when the more successful you become or, or the things that you want right. to do, it, it's it's mandatory yeah. that you find a way yeah. to dot the check off these boxes, dot yep. the I's, cross the T's. Okay, guys, I have a limited amount of time. Like, I really, truly understand yeah. the importance of, yeah. I have. I need to be concise, I need to be focused, 
discipline. Let's get this done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then move on. Because if, yeah. if not, you're yeah. not going to get Well, and it doesn't just, done. when you go home, it doesn't end. No. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's like, then, 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 then I can really, then I can really, really get the work done yeah. when I get it home. Really does, totally. It really yeah. does not. <laughs> going back to, again, yeah, how then you're, do we have? You go Berlin. home, yeah. and then the business and the cost of, you know, the overhead, I got to pay my employees, I have to do it. It never ends. Never ends. I, I was clueless as to that. So that's why I yeah. recognize, because I owned a gym, and I realized, like, that was the hardest thing I've ever done yeah. in yeah. my life. The yeah. financial responsibility, dealing with employees, um, not crossing the line, yeah. making mm. sure that, The customer like, service aspect. That's right. Oh, because yeah, I think with the, the, when you cross the line and you're trying to, like, be friends and yeah. be friends with, with some of the employees, uh, usually, like, what they do is people take kindness for weakness. Somebody's going to totally. deviate. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's and true. then it's going to cause me problems. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I, I, this is mandatory yeah. that I stay focused. Yeah. In, so what you we know. have at our, at, and maybe this, you, you guys have this too, or you did at your gym, but um, we would do like kind of like there's like a good cop, bad cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Absolutely. so like, yeah. then, uh, you it's know, good when you can team up like that. Yeah. yeah. So like, so Chris does a lot, like does a lot of the stuff that I have a harder time with. And yeah. I do some of the stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, on a different Perfect. aspect of it. But even some of like our managers, like they will take the role of being like the bad cop. And then yeah. we can be kind of like, like that. Hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. it's safe today. Yeah. It's hard to do everything to right. be every, no. No, Every personality in mm -hmm. one person. Wear a lot of hats. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that, you know, these are the these are all the issues that we face. You know, as adults, this is why it's hard to make friends, you know. So what we what we need to do is we need to become self aware of mm -hmm. our energy, right? Mm -hmm. How totally. how we're, how our energy is being brought into the equation. Mm -hmm. You know, if you show up to mm -hmm. a new yoga class or you show up to a knitting group. <laughs> and people and still do and that and you have and you're dedicating extra time to make friends and you're still having issues with it it's like being self aware and then the second thing is you know um, bring value to the table if you want mm -hmm. to elevate yourself like mm -hmm. make sure that you figure out what your value is that you bring to the table if you're looking to you know elevate your friend circle and, and wanting to bring success maybe you're the designated driver everywhere and that's what you're yeah. bringing to the table yeah. exactly. everyone wants those friends yeah and then if you're if you're oh, if you if you know in terms of like the workplace um, there's obviously a different dynamic when you own your business versus mm -hmm. when you work for an mm -hmm. organization but you know no matter what healthy boundaries that if you work for an organization like following those those healthy boundaries and then outside mm -hmm. of work try to try to like dedicate yourself to making those friends outside of work mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. be aware of yourself and then if you work for yourself well then you can mm -hmm. do whatever you want yeah. you can do it however you want it yes <laughs> trial and error that's, yeah. that's how we learn right <laughs> so let us know what you guys have dealt with your experiences we want to know I hope you feel like we're really truly talking to you because we are and um, and we hope to see you on the flip side of this until next time Fan Flex Friday, Olympia TV. Subscribe, yeah. like, comment down below. <laughs>